In descriptive statistics, we want to portray our data to others in a table or a graph setting. In this video, we will look at how to do that for qualitative data. So remember, qualitative data is data that is a characteristic or some sort of quality or attribute about an item. So qualitative data really is most generally collected at the nominal level of our level of measurement in name only. So attributes like color or gender or um, places that people live, you know, those sorts of things. Now, if you're looking at trying to find information of how to set up graphs and tables of data that is quantitative, and possibly where you have several values and you're looking at finding a frequency distribution and graphing that for quantitative data, I've done a video on that as well, and I've linked that video in the description of this one. But here we're going to do it for qualitative data. We're first going to look at how to make a frequency distribution, and then we're going to look at graphing something called a Pareto chart or a Pareto graph. So let's get started. In this, I've written up the data of car color. So let's say, for example, students were working with a statistical class and they had the slots of a parking lot numbered from one to how many ever, and they randomly selected 24 of the parking spaces and then went out and looked at what the color of the car was that was parked in that slot. And then they just wrote down the color when they collected their data. So this is the data that was brought back in. Now, if we are to make a frequency distribution of this data, a frequency distribution is just a fancy way of saying make a table. So what we want to do is see what are the colors that were involved with this, and then look at how many of each color there is to make our frequency distribution. So first is blue, then we have black, after that I see red and white, silver, and brown. So what I first did was just look at scanning through and made one line for each type of characteristic or attribute that was identified in the sample. Now once we have each of the data classifications written down, we next want to take a tally of the frequency in which those data values occurred. And that will kind of be our intermediate work with our frequency distribution. We will then change those tallies to the numeral values to finish off and complete our frequency distribution. So we're just going to go through the data and then systematically look through and do tallies across from that characteristic. So we have a blue, then another blue, then a black, a red, a white, another white, then another black, a silver, red, black, black, white, then black, white, brown, blue, red, black, then white, black, white, and then last line, silver, white, and red. So here we have done, and sometimes we have that temptation to just go for the blue and then search out all the blues and then go to the blacks and search out all the blacks, but it's really easy to miss data values when you're going through the data set that way, it really is worth taking the time to just go through one at a time systematically through and then tallying 
and then in the final step, change your tallies to the numerator. And then here is our frequency distribution. They might call it a frequency distribution table, a frequency distribution chart, or a frequency distribution. But that's all it's asking you to do, is to make this table. Next up, what we're going to look at is what it is that they're asking you to do if they ask you to create a Pareto graph, or sometimes they even call it a Pareto chart. Now, for a Pareto chart, what they want you to do is actually look at your qualitative data, and Pareto charts are just for qualitative data. So we're gonna look at our qualitative data, and your bars are supposed to be organized by the category with the most frequent, and then working down to the least frequent. So I need to have my frequency distribution first so I know how to put the placement in my Pareto chart. So when I look at this, I see that black as well as white occurred most frequent than all the others, but the same frequency as each other. So I can start this with either black or with white. There's no determining factor when they tie for the frequency as they go. But you want to, again, for Pareto, and it's spelled P-A-R-E-T-O, chart. The biggest thing to remember is the bars go from tall to short. So we're going to start with black. And then the next one will be white because those both occur the most frequent but same as each other. So these will have a bar height of seven. And then I look for the next highest frequency and that's a frequency of four, so that'll be red, that will be the next category. Then after that, the next higher frequency is a frequency of three for blue. And then after the blue category that has a frequency of three, the next one would be silver with a frequency of two. And then lastly, brown with a frequency of one. So there you have your Pareto chart from the tallest, most frequent down to the least frequent. Now this could either be done with frequency or relative frequency. If they ask you to do a Pareto chart with relative frequency, just remember your vertical axis has to be incremented by your relative frequency equal increments. So um, what you'd always want to do is kind of look at what you have for your relative frequencies and then decide whether you want to go in tenths or whether you want to go in um, hundreds or whatever the values are that you would need for your relative frequency. Just remember this has to be equal increments as you go and you want to always label your axis. So your horizontal axis is going to be the um, name of the qualitative data, what it's representing, and then your vertical axis is your frequency, most generally, but sometimes can be your relative frequency. Now, there's a case in point here that I really want to hit home for you, is that in statistics, it's very symbol and vocabulary laden. And really, a lot of times, the words or the symbols that are being used are actually more confusing or intimidating than the concepts that they are representing. So it's really important that you work on getting comfortable with what the words are and what concepts or what ideas that they represent so you don't miss out on some easy ideas or easy like, things they're asking you to do just because the words were intimidating. So Pareto chart, just organize your categories from tall to small.